Hello everyone and welcome back to our blind let's play of 999 the first game in the nonary trilogy and in our last episode we got the ending zero lost in which it, it, it gave us a lot of answers but also raised a lot more questions and hopefully today in the three that left behind ending which now if you'll notice has a yellow unlock next to it maybe now we can finally get some answers to what the heck is going on with this game. Uh, because we know why the game was done. The game was done to punish um, uh, the, the pharmaceutical company. And we know that Zero is vengeful. And wants revenge for them doing this game nine years ago. But the question is. Who was the guy that was thrown behind the door. That was you know the snake character. Uh, who is that guy? Uh, who is Zero? Why did the Zero bracelet work with June's number? And um, yeah, uh, what did Zero mean when Zero said they lost in the last ending? Anyway, let's just jump right in. I know you want to get to it. I know I want to get to it. Let's see how this game ends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip right to uh, the scene that we know should be different, which is the coffin. Now, the question is, how in the world does the coffin play into this? Because we learn the code from the other path, right? We, I mean, we haven't gone back and looked at the safe. We haven't opened up the document. We don't know about Cradle, uh, the pharmaceutical company. So how are we going to open up this tomb if we don't know the code is, what was it? Uh, yeah, whatever the code was. I'm looking at my notes here and I have my Gabriel Knight notes with my 999 notes. So I see 14383421. I don't know if that's my 999 notes or my Gabriel notes, but yeah. And this is where it ended the first time. The world blinked. Suddenly, there was a voice inside of Junpei's head. Truth had gone. Truth had gone. And truth had gone. Ah, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. Wait, what? What the hell was that? That voice? Junpei was utterly and completely baffled. Yeah, so am I. It wasn't... Huh? That that, that that was the note from the other path. What's up? Seven and Clover ran over to him, but Jinpei didn't know what to tell them. Huh? All the dots. If he told them he heard a voice, they'd laugh. Or worse, think he was going insane. So all he said was, Oh, um, <clears throat> nothing. He cleared his throat a little too loud and looked pointedly down at his bracelet. There were a pair of small buttons protruding from either side of it. Jinpei. He pressed the buttons. Huh. So we just know. Oh, is this the uh the morphogenic field? Because it says we need danger and inspiration. And the fact is, we're in a very dangerous spot. And you know, our friends are on the line. Uh, did we just tell ourselves telepathically the answer from a previous play? I mean, my, I think my head just exploded. Let's go ahead and click the answer we know is right. Which is, truth had gone, truth has gone, the truth is gone. That was it. Four, three, eight. Oh yeah, that's a code. Okay, that is the one that I wrote down. Eight numbers blinked on and then off on the bracelet display. Jinpei checked one last time. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Huh? Huh? Hey, what the hell were those numbers? Oh my gosh, are those? Huh. <sighs> All the dots. Junpei, he didn't answer. He simply walked straight to the coffin. 
He knelt down and found the keypad, running over the numbers in his head so they wouldn't forget. One four three eight three four two one. One four three eight three four two one. With trembling fingers, he punched them in. That was all of them. He punched the E button. There was a moment of complete silence. Then there was the sound of the coffin lid unlatching. Someone sat up out of it. <sighs> no way! Wh Why are you... <laughs> She's gonna be so happy. Oh? Is that you, Clover? I apologize for worrying you. Snake! You? Why? Junpei? And Seven? Is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Just like Rip Van Winkle. Still, it was very much like Snake to simply cut the heart of the matter and ask. <laughs> Jeez. Junpei and Seven shared a wry smile. But his eyes were filled with tears. <laughs> With a cry of joy, she leapt into Snake's arms. Aww. Gently now. My body's still a little weak. Oh, you're back. Clover looked like nothing as... Clover looked nothing so much as a lost child who had finally found a home. She cried and cried and cried. Her eyes were red and her nose was running. She hiccuped and gasped as if she were about to begin hyperventilating. You're back. Aww. Her voice was happy, but almost desperate, as if she would feared he would disappear again if she stopped talking to him. Tear after tremendous tear rolled its way down her face. Her small arms stained as she clutched Snake's body as tightly as she could. Perhaps she had to convince herself he was real. Perhaps she was worried he would be gone the moment she let go. Perhaps she simply didn't know what else to do. Come now, what's gotten into you? You're acting as though I've returned from the grave. Not as though. You did. I really thought you were dead. Huh? You sure? Idiot, idiot, idiot. By the way, I really love this music. It's so gorgeous. Ah, <sighs> all the doubts. Clover broke into sobs so great she could no longer talk. It was a touch of reunion between brother and sister. Even though Jinpei knew they had little time, and every minute they wasted was a minute they wasted, it felt cruel to pull them apart. Jinpei and Seven sat down on one of the pews, waiting for Clover to calm down before explaining to Snake what had transpired. All the dots. I see. I believe I understand things rather well now. Thank you. In the shower room, there is a dead body wearing my clothes. Because of that, you thought that I was dead, correct? Ah, uh, basically sums it up. He had quickly and neatly summarized the events of the last several hours. Yeah. Jinpei nodded. You also discovered a corpse in the captain's quarters, and Santa turned on you here, in this room. Do I have it straight? Basically so far. Well, the dead body in the captain's quarters is a surprise. Sorry. There wasn't a good time to tell you. Don't worry about it. He <laughs> didn't know, right? Well then, I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was indisposed, but it's still something of a mystery who did all this, and why. Not to mention how Jinpei knew the code. <laughs> the corpse in the shower room that looked like me, and the corpse in the captain's quarters. Why were they killed in the way they were? You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room. We don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes, but you're wearing some kind of weird robes. That means someone took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. We need to figure out who that was. I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done this to me. I only just now woke up. I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They must have undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on C-Deck. What happened? 
The same thing that happened to every one of us when we were abducted. A canister releasing some sort of gas was thrown into the room. I believe the gas is some sort of incapacitating agent. Then that means it was... Zero. Looks that way, huh? There's nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. Hmm. Jinpei crossed his arms and thought. Why? Why did Zero make Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? How would that benefit Zero? I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? You know, I've been asking that question for like... I don't know how many episodes is this now? 20-something? And I have no <laughs> idea how I got the passcode for the coffin either. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Where did those words come from? Why did I feel compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet after hearing them? Seven had had some about it while they waited for Clover to finish crying. He'd had no answer for him then, and he still didn't. All I know is my fingers moved on their own. It was like I did it subconsciously. It was like someone was telling you from far away. <sighs> I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? I'm really glad that, you know, they, they've been talking about the the field for the entire game and bringing up instances of how people are learning from other people or crystals or rats. I just think it's really cool that they actually made that a major point in the plot because without that code, we can't, we, we can't get him out of the coffin. And there's no way we could have gotten the code anywhere else. <sighs> also, Snake and Clover had been subjects in a similar experiment nine years ago. The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. Epiphany, that was the word. In the other episode, I was like, what was it, inspiration? And they said inspiration, but epiphany. And, and someone did actually die. A girl. Her name was... Experiment conducted on this same ship nine years ago, and a girl had died during it. Morphogenetic field theory. The two murders. Switching clothes. The nonary game. The maelstrom in his head spat out words and ideas that disappeared back into it almost as soon as he grasped them. <sighs> All the dots. But as he struggled through them, Jinpei began to realize something. There was something that tied all of them together. And the point connecting the dots... Zero. Zero. He's the ringleader. The person who trapped nine of us on this sinking ship. Zero should know everything. If we can uncover Zero's identity, all of our questions will be answered. <sighs> all the dots. Who was Zero? Junpei had the beginnings of a theory. If he could only test it, or perhaps... At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to decipher the details later. For now, it is of utmost importance that we escape. Junpei, it was 4.30 the last time you checked the clock. Yes? That means we have less than an hour. We must hurry. Uh, hey, uh, how are we gonna get out of here? 5 plus 4 plus 7 plus 2 is 18. 1 plus 8 is 9. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. With Snake, we can open the door. Don't tell me you hadn't figured that out. As they sight back and forth, Junpei glanced at Snake's left hand. He was wearing a bracelet with the two on it. Come on, you gotta tell me these things. I, uh, assumed you'd figured it out. Forget it. Let's just get going. Seven stopped off toward the smaller number nine door. Clover, Snake, and Jinpei followed. Seven quickly laid his hand on the red, and Asterix appeared on the screen. Jinpei and the others followed suit and laid their hands on the scanner panel. Soon, there were four asterisks on the screen. Seven glanced at them, then laid his hand on the lever of the red. All right, you guys ready to go? Yes. Yep. God. All the dots. Jinpei paused Not for a yet. moment. Huh? 
before we go in, I'd like to check something. You want to check something? Yeah, but before I do, Seven, could you pull the lever? I want to make sure we can verify with just the four of us. What do you mean? We don't need... Just do it, alright? Yeah, I'm confused. But if the door opens, don't go in yet, okay? <laughs> I'm confused. I, I think I... I think everyone's been confused if they play this game. <clears throat> All the dots. Please, this is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Jinpei looked directly into Seven's eyes. The older man looked back for a moment and nodded. I... Fine. I was about to say, how do you look directly into uh, Seven's eyes? He's blind and I realize, oh, that snake. I'm so... I'm so discombobulated right now. There's another door, of course. Seven pulled down the lever and the door nine creaked open. Then they waited. Six, seven, eight. After nine seconds, the door closed. Yeah, we know that, Junpei. What's your point? Huh. All the dots. All right. That means the four of us can go into door nine. Yeah, we already knew that. So, we knew that already. It's obvious. <laughs> Obvious. Yeah, you're right. It is. Now, what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Zero's bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? For a moment, Clover looked surprised, but she recovered quickly and stuck her tongue out at Junpei. <laughs> so you did know I had it. I picked it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. <laughs> She reached into one of her pockets of her volum voluminous jacket and produced a bit. Game, please don't give me a word that big when we're in this tense of a situation. Jimmy took it from her and turned to Seven. This was on the left hand of the corpse in the captain's quarters. If you look at it, you can see it's got a zero on the face. Just to make this a little easier to talk about, uh, I'm going to call the guy we found dead in the captain's quarters uh, Cap. Okay. Then I should be able to open door 9 with just me, Clover, and his bracelet. 5 plus 4 plus 0 is 9. Well, the big question is, if Cap is the mastermind of this game, would he really put one of these bracelets on? Anyway, uh, let's just give it a shot. Clover, give me your hand. Uh, okay. Now the captain's bracelet. And pull the lever. However... The door didn't open. The red's display read, error. I knew it. Now, what does this tell us? Maybe the bracelet has to be on your wrist in order for it to work? Yeah, that, that's actually a very good point. No, that's impossible. Did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? That's also a good point. Whether or not it's on your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is put the bracelet near the panel for it to register. Hmm. Hmm. Seven, we did this bracelet in front of the scanner panel. Sure enough. A single asterisk appeared on the red. Huh. Looks like you're right. See? So what does that mean? There's only one possibility. That bracelet isn't the number zero. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Then what number is it? Let's find out. Jinpei. Scan the bracelets with this combination. Okay, so we kind of know this one, right? It's... We know that zero is six, so... Snake is 2, Junpei is 5, and 6 would give us 11, 13, which is 4. Snake Clover is 2 plus 4 plus 6. That would give us 12, which is 3. Snake 2, Junpei 5, 7, 7, cap 6. That's 13, uh, 15, 20, which is two. I really hope my math is good because I have a really big headache right now from everything that's going on and I'm just so into this game, I wanna play anyway. So I'm not thinking as clearly as I might. Two, four, seven, six. That would give us 19, which is, um, 1 plus 9 is 10, 10 is 1, 7, 5, 6, that would give us 11, 18, which is 9, 7, 5, 6. 
Let's try seven, me, and cap. Equals three. If this combination opens the door, then cap's bracelet is number six. I should know that from when we did this before, but I don't remember it, like I said. Hey, it opened! Had the door opened! What? Why? What does that mean? Well, Seven and Clover seemed rather shaken. As they turned to look at Junpei for answers. That's what I want to know. Why is it number six? Why is it June's number? The door slid heavily shut. Junpei raised an eyebrow. Isn't it obvious? Cap's bracelet is number six. Yeah, I, I know that. But doesn't it say zero? This isn't a zero. The symbol on here isn't a number zero. What? It's a letter O. What? O. O what? All the dots. Yeah, all... What? Whoa, wait a minute. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I mean, we figured out that Cap's bracelet is six, right? Yeah. Does that mean there are two people with sixes? Before Junpei could answer, Snake spoke up. There is, most likely, only one person with a six. But I don't get it. What about June? How is it? Oh. I mean, uh, give me, give me um, one second. I'm going to look back in my notes because just knocked everything over. I'm pretty sure in one of my pages somewhere way back here, I wrote down all the, the hexes um, when we're trying to open up a puzzle. And yeah, hey, hey, if you look at this, uh, 10 is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 D, 14 E, 15 is F. 16G, 17H, 18I, 19J, 20SK, 21L, 22M, 23N, and 24 is O, and 24 is 2 plus 4, which is 6. So the digital root of O is 6. Huh. That actually works out. I don't understand how that helps us, but it works out. Well, this is only an educated guess, but... I think June's number was never six to begin with. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was because in all the calculations we made in the game, it was always six. Her bracelet was flipped. What? In other words, June's real number is nine. That doesn't work. That seems the most likely. Then all this number door stuff was just a load of crap? Why would you say that? Because... If June is nine, then the numbers wouldn't match up. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I said. Clover grabbed Junpei's notebook and began to write furiously in it. Here, look. Thank you for doing the math for me, Clover. I appreciate it. Junpei leaned in, look over, look at it. List of all the numbered doors June's gone through. I'll let you know what I'm writing, okay, Snake? <laughs> okay, all the dots. So number one, door four, was six plus three plus five plus eight, which is twenty-two. 2 plus 2 is 4. Now, if her number was 9, it would have been 5 plus 2, which is 7. Wouldn't have worked. Door 8, 6 plus 3 plus 8 is 17. 1 plus 7 is 8. If it was a 9, it would have been 4 plus 7. Now, it would have been, um, if it was 9, it would have been 12 plus 8, which is 20, which is 2. I think. Yeah, but the point is, she's right. Uh, there's no way her number could be nine. <laughs> All the dots. And that's everything. I wrote down which door she went into and with whom. And I wrote what all the numbers were. So if you switch nine in wherever there's a six, the numbers don't work. I'm glad Clover's on my team. If the digital root is seven, then you can't open door four. Thank you so much, Clover. I appreciate you showing this for us. If the digital root is two, then you can't open door eight. Clover? Do you notice anything interesting on that list? Uh, I can't see the top one. Um, is it, is it that eight is also in every single sequence? What do you mean? You're talking about three, right? Oh, three is also, oh, three is also in every sequence. Nine, three, five, eight, nine, three, eight, nine, three, seven, eight, nine, three, one, eight. Yeah, three and eight are in all the sequences, too. Three? Santa's always in the room with her. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, that's right. What about it? 
That's quite simple, really. You told me that the first time you came to this room, Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Now, doesn't that beg the question why? The answer is easy. Why would Santa do such a thing? Sorry, I missed that. Because Santa can't open door 9 with only 7 in Lotus. Of course, there's only one reason for that. His number isn't actually 3. Santa's real number, 7? Would you be so kind as to modify my sister's equations? Yeah, sure. Seven took the pen from a confused clover and began to adjust the calculations. This is what you were getting at, right, Snake? Hmm. All the dots. Hmm. All the dots. He read out the changes to me, and when he finished, he looked at Snake. So if you make all the threes a zero, then the math works. Santa is zero. Snake smiled. Thank you. That is exactly right, Seven. Santa's true number wasn't three. It was zero. No way. Santa is... And June was nine, not six. Conversely, Santa was zero, not three. Plus three and minus three, they cancel one another out. Nothing appears out of order. Oh, this is crazy. Santa was still playing by the rules of the nonary game this whole time. Precisely. So you're saying Santa planned this whole thing? I'm not sure if he acted alone or not, but I think it is safe to conclude that he is zero. If my hypothesis is correct. <laughs> All the dots. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. All the dots. Clover bit her lips. She seemed to be having some difficulty believing her brother's explanation. Junpei. Hmm. All the dots. Junpei remained silent and thought. Snake's hypothesis. Something doesn't seem right. June's bracelet being flipped. Even if that were possible, that would mean there are two number nine bracelets. And if that's the case... All the dots. All right, that's enough talking. No, 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 go back to that. I want to know what you were thinking. Let's go. It's high time we went through that door. No, I want to know what he was thinking. Well, we're going to have to wait. It's about time we enter door nine. Door 9 opened. They leapt through. Oh, it's right there. The dead was directly in front of them as they came through the door. Quickly, they scanned the bracelets. And the detonator stopped. Oh. After pausing for a moment to catch the collective breath, Jinpei's companions headed down the long hallway in front of them. All right, let's keep going. At the end was a set of stairs leading down to the ship. I think these stairs go to the bottom deck. They looked. They leaned out and looked over the side. Looks dry. Let's head down. After deciding it was safe, they headed down the stairs. Before long, Junpei and his companions found themselves on the bottom deck. They turned left into another hallway at the end of which they found another door. Hey, it's a... And of course, there was a symbol engraved over the keyhole. It looked like the sort of harpoon one would use to hunt fish, the kind with three prongs. Hmm. Snake traced the shape of it with his fingers. This is the Neptune symbol. There must be a key around here somewhere. Uh, Neptune key. I only have the Uranus key card. Clearly, it wasn't going to open this door. It's a different planet. Plus, it's the wrong kind of key. Let's turn around and go back for now. Yeah. After examining the door a few more minutes, they gave up and headed back the way they come. Hey, another door! With a little more searching, they found a metal door. And a card reader this time. A symbol was engraved onto the card reader. It's the Uranus symbol! This is the place. He muttered to himself and slid the card through the reader. It beeped once, and the light on it turned green. With a heavy metal groan, the door creaked open. Hmm. All the dots. Hmm. All the dots. <gasps> yep, we're just, we're just gonna have a lot of dots. Hmm. Jinpei, Clover, Snake, and Seven looked at one another, nodded, and stepped through. The room they found themselves in was full of books. Oh wow. my. It's the library. This is the force of knowledge. It's totally full of books. There's so many. 
I don't know where to look. Oh no, I have a feeling it's gonna be this major escape room puzzle with books. Oh jeez. It looked remarkably like a library. Not the sort of library where large numbers of people came to read books. More the sort of library that was simply a place to store books. He felt a little overwhelmed by the sheer number of books. But Jim paid his best to speak with authority. All right. If we want to get through that door out there, we need the Neptune key. I say we split up and look for it. Okay. Let's split up, gang. Very well. Sure thing. Good. Let's get started then. We don't have a lot of time. Hurry. Alice sleeps in a chamber past the forest of knowledge. As he began his search for reasons he didn't fully understand, Junpei felt those particular words float through his mind. Here we go. Could be our last escape room. Or this game may have more puzzles for us. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter. You are brilliant and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.